Good morning, everyone. It's going to be a pretty day here. It was very cold last night. Didn't realize it was going to get so cold. I went to the barn last night, took care of everyone, and I was hot. And I'm going, oh, I'll leave all the windows open for the horses to look at rather than close it all up because it actually gets really warm in there, uh, even if it's really cold. And, uh, and this morning, my sissy comes in. She went to work. She says, man, I, I'm up. my door almost froze on the car. I'm going, what? Was that cold? And <laughs> uh, I said, how do people do it without all the weather reports that we're getting now? Of which most of it. <laughs> I find it interesting now and how storms are, right? Uh. The names, the storms are getting names now, this, that, right? Every one of them has just passed us up. We got a little bit of rain yesterday, not much, you know, but it was supposed to be, again, this big hollow blue. Okay, whatever. Ah. Hey, it is what it is. Well, other places, I know, right? Sometimes I feel I live in a different world here kind of separated from everybody else <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> you know but again when I look back the foundations were made we make the foundations for a good place and to be in a good place there's one thing I have to say about my husband and I we're not greedy people. We're not greedy at all. We're so willing to share what we have. It doesn't matter if it's money or our, our uh, expertise in things or the products we have or the time we have. I noticed that. For the both of us, we're really, really not. We're not greedy. We're not greedy for power, you know. Um, so the foundations were laid here to, and always with God's will in mind, always with God in, uh, God in the mix. Right? God had something to say. And he did. As I said, we built their home on a rock. Didn't know. Well, just, oh, that's just coincidence. <laughs> Whatever. You guys look at it however you want to. Right? This place is amazing. And our pond's not draining. <laughs> I've mentioned that before because we had that one slip and it looked like it was draining out underneath somewhere. But that's not happening. There's plenty of water in there still. And there was time for it to drain, so it's not. Anywho, so let's get going on Leviticus. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. If firepower, okay, is the only thing anymore that keeps you safe, or you think you're going to be safe, that protects you, this and that. And you're gearing up to literally right, harm whom. Then uh, you're not made of much, in my opinion. Okay, okay, I'm just saying. I remember um, we have a neighbor here and we were really good friends. We're not anymore. I'm not. I'm, I'm, it's just a neighbor now. I have nothing to do with anymore. There are several reasons on why that is. I don't like trouble on my homestead here. I don't like people who are don't know how to behave properly around other people. Done, okay? But there was one thing that really alerted me to do I really want a person like that around my family? And it's not about, oh, well, you have to love your enemy, this and that. Well, you know what? <laughs> that guy takes two to tango, okay? I'd be more than willing to uh, acknowledge our friendship again if I would see a change in the other person, okay? But there's one thing that alerted me. There was some stuff going on here, and... 
it actually was within the county and uh, it had to do with some officials or whatever and uh, we had a conversation and and I said, so if I'm not on your side, per se, not even, I'm not going to be shooting at you or anything, but opinion-wise or the way I think things should be or dealt with, I'm not on your side. What you going to do? He says, well, when the time comes and the need arises, I will come and I shoot, will shoot every one of you. Whoa, okay then. I said, without any kind of provocation except forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, and that would serve what? So, you know, again, that's like, wow, really? So anything in the past, right? all the help that we've actually given each other right? and the good times that we had, this it doesn't matter anymore. Nothing. So if I decide that, no, I'm not going to go for that and we're going to have to find another solution for it, then I'm not worthy to live anymore according to that person. That's it. And as I said, here's the thing again, right? Yes, I would say hand in hand combat. Uh, right? Would I win? Maybe. Right? But if I have to stand in front of a gun and the person is set on pulling the trigger, yep, well, I will be the one going down. Right? Yes, but I'm not going to look at that and go, oh my God, I'm so scared. This, I'm going to look at the other person and go, that's all you got. That's all you got. Isn't it? That's all you got. Well, so be it. Right? I am not going to lower myself to that level. Even if it is the, at the cost of myself or anyone around me. Because I would like to be with my family in spirit world. Ah. You go different places according to different things. Don't matter who you're related to here on earth. Okay, had to say that. Ten yellow. Oh, oh, the sacrifice for sin. Here we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I started reading that yesterday, but I couldn't remember anymore until I just, uh, there you go again. How are these Bible readings guided by God and Spirit World? Hey, you know what? I'm going to go by that. Done. Okay. So, A, this is Leviticus 4. A of the high priest. Yahweh spoke to Moses and said, Speak to the Israelites and say, If anyone sins inadvertently against any of Yahweh's commandments and does anything prohibited by them, if the one who sins is the anointed priest, thus making the people guilty, then for the sin which he has committed, he must offer Yahweh a young bull, an unblemished animal from the herd as a sacrifice for sin. You know, I thought about that unblemished again. I wonder if rather than the males having everything intact and the females, I think it's more that they have not had right, interaction with either a male or a female. Interesting, yes. That's kind of what it sounds like now. Huh? Something that's still, oh, is this that, is that, is that something that people think about in animals? Being a virgin still? Something unblemished. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Is that what it is? Hmm, could be. He will bring the bull before Yahweh at the entrance to the tent of meeting, will lay his hand on its head and slaughter it before Yahweh. The anointed priest will then take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting. You know, what I find interesting here right now is that, so if one of the priests yeah, sins, then someone else, but they're not raising cattle, are they? They're not raising cattle or, or any of the other animals. So someone's got, what is their sin? How is their sin taken care of by that? <laughs> That's an odd one, don't you think? Ah, collective sin. That brings back collective sin. But is the priest going to learn anything? He says, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> What's the matter? The next time if something happens again, I'll just, hey, make sure you got enough bulls ready there, unblemished ones, young ones, you know, because uh, that's an easy fix right there. Right, yeah. 
How easy did they make it for themselves? And is this really what Yahweh expected from them when they sinned? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The anointed priest will then take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting. Yeah. He will then dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times in front of the sanctuary curtain before Yahweh. Man, that had to be a stinky place. The priest will then put some, oh my gosh, some of the blood on the horns of the altar of incense, smoking before Yahweh in the tent of meeting, and will pour all the rest of the bull's blood at the foot of the altar of burnt offerings at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Did they clean all that off again? I wonder how bloody them horns were. Do they have to clean it off again afterwards? Did this stuff not get cleaned? After? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Man. Ugh. Of the bull offered as a sacrifice for sin, he will set aside all the fat. The fat covering the entrails. All the fat on the entrails. Both kidneys. The fat on them and on the loins. The mass of fat which he will remove from the liver and kidneys. Exactly as was done with the portion set aside in the communion sacrifice. And the priest will burn these pieces on the altar of burnt offerings. <clears throat> the bull's skin and all its meat, its head, its shins, its entrails, and its offal. The whole bull he will then have carried out of the camp to a clean place. The place where the fatty ashes are thrown and will burn it on a wood fire. It must be burnt where the ashes are thrown. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Outside of the camp. For everyone to see. Ooh, did everybody know what that actually meant? That they have a high priest who doesn't know how to follow God's laws? I don't know. Well, as like I said, easy fix. I wish we could take care of our sins like that. Oh, we just get baptized. Yeah, does it really work that way? Okay, I'm just saying. That's a good thing. It's a good thing to do something to acknowledge that you want to be on the side of God. And baptism is one of those things, right? Yes? It's a commitment. It's a very serious commitment. But nowadays it seems like, well, you know, just get baptized. It's like another notch on the priest's belt or someone's belt, right? If you get someone baptized or if you, if you get someone to get baptized, right? Is it? Should it be like that? I think baptism, uh, uh, well, in the Catholic Church, how I could, a baby gets baptized, right? For, to, for protection, right? for sanctity of the, of the child, okay? Right? Yes, right away, offer it to God in that way, right? Yes, but I know in many other places it's not like that. Right? Yeah. When you find the Christ, it's not, but it should be a serious, a serious, absolute serious commitment when you do that. Then you don't step back anymore. You take the Ten Commandments serious, and you take the Lord's Prayer serious, and you take the death of Jesus and and uh, uh, and then the uh, resurrection serious. And you teach. What do you teach? All about love. All about the sanctity of life. All about, uh, should be all about protecting the children, protecting the women, protecting the men too. Yet. Yeah. I'm just saying. Okay, okay, okay. Where, do, where am I going with all this? Well, it all comes to my mind. Then I need to share it. Huh? Yes? Huh? Would this not be a whole lot? I could just, oh, yeah, yeah, that's how you take care of your sins. Yeah, yeah and I'm going, really? <laughs> am I not allowed to question this? It's kind of easy, huh? isn't it? Yes? Easy fix. Sounds to me like. What if? Okay, if the high priest, you know, we have to make a huh, commitment. Make a commitment. How bad? Okay, well, you know what? That, we're going to take a finger. We're not going to kill you, but we're going to have to take a finger from you this time. Next time we'll take an ear. Right? Yes? Something that people can see. You've been sinning as a high priest. As someone who's supposed to be 100%. The leader of the people, guiding them you know, towards God, with God. And here you are. What are you doing? Huh? 
All they have to do is take someone else's stuff, make a blood sacrifice. That's it. That is it. Oh. Yeah. The consequences don't seem to be so. Huh? Then again, reading this, we're going, do the people actually take, then will the people take the commandment serious? If the consequences are what? Okay. B, of the community of Israel. How huh? betcha, but let's see now. Same thing. If the whole community of Israel has sinned inadvertently, inadvertently, unknowingly, how do you sin if it's if it, you if you sin unknowingly then you don't know inadvertently so you don't know okay so all right well if it's inadvertently then how, how would anybody know that she sinned but that where did that come from you either know or you don't you know people who pretend like they don't know and then keep on doing whatever but oh well I wasn't taught I don't know yeah. hmm. Well, okay. If the whole community, okay, and without being aware of of it, has incurred guilt by doing something forbidden by Yahweh's commandments, how would you not know? Once the sin of which it is guilty has been discovered the community must offer a young bull, an unblemished animal from the herd, as a sacrifice for sin. Well, once it gets discovered, if it can't be discovered, then how can it be inadvertently at the same time? And how would the person or the people inadvertently not know if it can be discovered? Aha! All right. Well, people can look at that any way they want to. I just think... A couple of inches farther ahead and go really oh nice okay and bring it in front of the tent of meeting I think also I mean okay I kind of as I said hmm, okay but in a way it also shows that God will give you chance after chance after chance to do better right and before things really get out of hand but he does have to turn his back or <laughs> Well, you're turning his back completely to him, but then he can't do any kind of, he can't protect you anymore. He can't guide you anymore, right? He tries. He tries in a merciful way, right? in a, okay, you have to show, one has, it has to be shown, your sin has to be shown, but we're going to do it in a way that hopefully you will learn from it. When I look at the world today, it didn't work. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and bring it in front of it. The elders of the community will then lay their hands on the bull's head before Yahweh, and the bull will be slaughtered before Yahweh. The anointed priest will then take some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting. He will then dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times in front of the curtain before Yahweh. He will then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar standing before Yahweh inside the tent of meeting and then pour all the rest of the blood at the foot of the altar and burnt offerings at the entrance to the tent of meeting. There is something in the, uh, in the divine principle where God carries 95% of the responsibility for everything that he created, and we carry 5%, right? Yes? So in a way, you know, also these rituals, they show, okay, I think that's another way. We have forgot to teach us that you have responsibility. You can't just lay everything at my feet and then take care of it. You carry responsibility. In a way, this, in this way, they're admitting right, to having failed at something, right, to have not obeyed at something. Right? Yes, they have to show it openly. Okay. Again, in the way that God's trying to teach the people is really mild. It's really... It's in many ways really loving, though I don't like the butchering stuff, not the blood and blah, blah, blah. but, eh, yes, is it to raise people's conscience? I don't know. Did they not have one at that time? Okay, just saying. Eh, they had slaves. Slaves now. It's such a big thing. It's such a big deal. Right? A 
that time, <laughs> it was just, it's a part of the Bible. Slaves are a part of the Bible. Right? Yes? Nobody thought there was anything wrong with that. Why? Where was the conscience of the people regarding everybody as, well, that's a person. That's a person who can speak, who can feel, who can hear, who can see, make decisions, accomplish tasks. Okay? Yes? Okay. Well, anyway, it's a, it's, it's interesting, huh? What's the heart to mind? Mindset of the people has been for thousands and thousands of years. And where are we now, really, when it comes down to it? Man, I have a lot to say on this one. I don't even know we're done. He will then set aside all the fat from the animal and burnt it on the altar. He will then deal with the bull as he did with the bull in the sacrifice for sin. It will be dealt with in the same way. And once the priest has performed the rite of expiation for the people, they will be forgiven. Tudalu. He will then have the bull carried out of the camp and will burn it as he burned the first one. This is the sacrifice for the sin of the community. So, even though the people had the Ten Commandments and all that, and the guidance of God, they had to be taught about the Ten Commandments? Yes, exactly. People still need to be taught about the Ten Commandments today? Uh-huh. C. Of a leader of the community. When a leader has sinned and inadvertently <laughs> incurred guilt by doing something forbidden by the commandments of Yahweh, his God, or if the sin which he has committed is drawn to his attention, he must bring a he-goat as his offering, an unblemished male. He will then lay his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it on the spot where the burnt offerings are slaughtered before Yahweh. This is a sacrifice for sin. The priest will take some of the victim's blood on his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offerings. Oh, this one's a little different for the leaders. He will then pour the rest of its blood at the foot of the altar of burnt offerings and burn all the fat on the altar, as with the fat in the communion sacrifice. This is how the priest must perform the rite of expiation for him to free him from his sin, and he will be forgiven. Off with his head! <laughs> okay, anyway. <coughs> Leaders have such crucial positions all around the world. I wonder if they really take their leadership positions seriously. They should. D, of a private individual. If one of the country people sins inadvertently and incurs guilt by doing something forbidden by Yahweh's commandments, or if the sin which has committed is drawn to his attention, he must bring a she-goat as his offering for the sin which he has committed, an unblemished female. Oh. He will then lay his hand on the victim's head and slaughter it on the spot where the burnt offerings are slaughtered. Interesting, all the different animals that are needed to show the, the sin, where the sin was committed, who committed the sin. The priest will take some of its blood on his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offerings. He will then pour all the rest of the blood at the foot of the altar, all the blood. He will then remove all the fat as the fat was removed for the communion sacrifice, and the priest will burn it on the altar as a smell pleasing to Yahweh. This is how the priest must perform the right of expiation for him, and he will be forgiven. If he wishes to bring a lamb as an offering for this kind of sacrifice, he must bring an unblemished female. He will then lay his hand on the victim's head and slaughter it as a sacrifice for sin on the spot where the burnt offerings are slaughtered. The priest will take some of the victim's blood on his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offerings. Oh, man, them, blood, them horns, I wonder how bloody them horns were. He will then pour all the rest of the blood at the foot of the altar. He will then remove all the fat as was done for the sheep in the communion sacrifice. 
The priest will burn it as food burnt for Yahweh. This is how the priest must perform for him the rite of expiation for the sin which he has committed, and he will be forgiven. I wonder how often they had to do this. I bet you that fire was going day and night. <laughs> oh, that's it. I'm forward. Okay. Well, there you go. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that will work when I go to uh, Spirit World. And so, what do you think? Well, you know what? Whatever I did, it was all inadvertently. So, I raised goats. <laughs> oh, they're going to go, yeah. No. <laughs> but, I sent inadvertently. I didn't know. Right? I didn't know. Yeah, really? You really didn't know? Oh. I would say, I guess, it's a willingness to admit, I know I did wrong. And, again, did, did, did God need to teach the people? Yeah, okay. Well, within this commandment, you know, this is what it actually means. This is what huh, you misunderstood or something. Okay, I get that. So, oh, all right. Um inadvertently uh, doing things that's why i think it's important that we reflect before we react right? it's anger and resentment and hate seems to be so much more on people palatable on people's plates than joy happiness and forgiveness Ah, so is this also something that God was trying to teach? Okay, can't let you get away with it completely, okay? But here it is. And what it means is you get to start over again, right? And again, and again. Yes? There's one thing I want to mention this. Maybe I should wait, but I want to mention it anyway. There is something where you confess your sins. In the Catholic Church, it's you go and you're being taught as a kid. I, I remember sitting in and going, I don't know what to say. What should I say? But you had to go, right? Yes? Well, why do I need to do this? I didn't do anything. Right? So you, you go, what, twice a year, three times a year or something? Depends on before Easter, before Christmas, before whatever. I'm going to have to do anything. Why do I have to? Why do I have to sit in here? So here I'm sitting there, you know, in this little cubicle. And the, the priest is on the other side, you know, and then you can't see him. Can't smell. You can smell them. You can sometimes they hit their head against, uh, you know, and you just sleep. You know? you, there's this little screen, right? Yeah. Head against. You can see the hair sticking out. <laughs> Well, I'm being honest here. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm, I kneel there. And I'm going, I don't know, what should I tell him? Yeah, I think, okay, what did I do? What did I actually do? Yeah. And I try to come up with something. Oh, right there, right? I'm, I kind of was forced to lie. Right? Yes. So I did, I did, I would come up with, I, I, I had, I had negative thoughts about my brother and my sister, which was true. Okay. That was true. You know, so I came up with something, but it wasn't anything where, dear me, can't one, is one not allowed to just because I went, that was not nice. That was kind of mean. Why did they do that? Right. Yeah. Or, uh, okay. Then, uh, so I, I just come up with a couple of things, you know, and, and I guess, oh, Priest is, uh, is that all? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he gives you the ablutions. And then you, all right, say uh, say the Lord's Prayer, you know, and then da, 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 and you go out and you're sitting there and you say the Lord's Prayer. And, and then you're, oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yes. It wasn't an exercise that, it wasn't. It's not that I was not willing. I just, I wondered about the exercise. Why do I have to do that as a kid? What? What have I done? I haven't done 
anything, really, when it comes down to it. But here's the thing. In the Catholic Church, too, so the priest is, just like doctors are, you know, will not you know, tell anybody, you know, oh, hey, by the way, guess what I heard in the you know, confession stand. But here's the thing. People who abuse children, rape women, murder, get to do the same thing. And the priest can't say anything. And then, uh, would that just be a one-time thing? Then they can go and do it again. Then they can go and confess again. And be forgiven every time. Mm. I'm not sure how that really works. I'm not sure this is being done properly. I think that if you're not willing to stand in front of everyone confessing uh, something horrific like that, and then want to take responsibility or say, I need help. You shouldn't be able to just do it like that either. Eh? In secret. Because where is then truly the, the repentance? Yeah. So you can unburden yourself from certain things. I feel better and then do it again anyway I think about things like that and it is the way it is set up right but is a person just because they go to confession this and that is a person says that three times a year at least I have to go to confession like, man I'm, shortly I'm not I'm not going to why would I why won't I learn? Why would I go in there and say every time, oh, I lied about something? I'd say about the third or fourth time that I'm in there and the priest kind of knows me and goes, well, girl, what's your, pro what's your problem? Why do you keep doing that? Stop doing it. Why do you come to confession? If you're just going to go and do it again, why don't you come every 10 years? Right? Just saying. Or is it a ritual again to, to do what? To remind us? Hopefully we'll get better little by little by little. Spiritually we grow. Hopefully do get better little by little. Is it like that? Are the people working like that? Catholic Church is an old, old, old church. So are other churches. This and that. Are things getting better out there? Let me ask you. Are they? If not, then that system has failed. Hasn't it? Yes? Don't know. I think the best thing is to just keep teaching. Keep teaching according to... Don't be hoodwinked. Don't let others fool you. Know God's heart. And uh, develop a relationship with God. Right? Yes? It can be done. It's it, His willingness is always there. It's always there. We're the one turn away oh it's beautiful and sunny out there i have got to get the dog food ready i bet you they're they're on their way home pretty soon and it's gonna get warm it's gonna get really warm i'm gonna plant more stuff out there god's love and blessings always may he protect you and i will talk to you another time <laughs>